Hey everybody, tonight's video is going to be about the Index Coin by Flux Design. I've actually had this for a long time, I just never did a real video review of it. Uh, it was just a short video. And somebody this week was asking me about what a good quiet fidget would be, and this would be at the top of the list for quiet. It's usually the answer to that question. So we're going to take it apart, even though it was glued and you're not supposed to take it apart. We're going to show you, show you how to take it apart. Uh, compare it to a few other things, and uh, measure it, weigh it, the usual. Just have a good time, try not to drop anything, and uh, yeah, stick around. So as you can see off to the right there, um, those are the different material options and finish options. Um, some things are in stock and some things are out of stock. And uh, I believe right now you can get titanium, stainless steel, or aluminum. And aluminum, of course, is the cheapest. That's around 50 bucks. I have a uh, anodized, they're all anodized. This is a clear anodized aluminum one. And it has a, what looks like a rough texture. and even actually feels like a slightly soft texture, roughened surface. But it's not really rough at all. In fact, it's very slippery. Um, this is one of my next in line to get sandblasted back to raw aluminum. Um, that's just a hassle for me to do sandblasting, but I can. And uh, what I'll do is I'll just I'll hit all these outside surfaces and I'll tape off the inside surfaces. So I think that happens to them, but uh, then this will be a darker shade of gray a little bit. It'll probably get dirty a lot easier, but it'll be a heck of a lot easier to grip. Um, but I'm in a dry climate, or at least dry in the wintertime. In the summertime, it won't be an issue. And even once your fingers warm it up, and once your fingers get a little moisture on there, it's not that bad. But on a really dry day, it can be pretty slippery. Things to think about. So one thing worth mentioning, I don't know uh, how available they are out in the wild, but they did also make these in brass and in um, copper. So there was a limited release of those. But um, yeah, aluminum is nice. It's light. As you can hear, it barely makes any noise at all. In fact, nothing's really rubbing against each other. There's a bearing in there and, uh, and some magnets attracting each side. And uh, what you really get is the haptic feedback. It would be great if this had a little bit better of a grip on it. Um, I'm just thinking that. Every time I pick it up, I think that. And then I think, well, I gotta, I gotta go get the sandblaster and go do that someday. Um, someday I will. But in the meantime, let's just, uh, let's compare it to a few things. So um, I figured, well, I would give it everything out that I have that's triangular shaped. And maybe you'll have the same thing and you'll be able to get an idea of the size. But here's a compo form triquetra. They are almost identical. And we have a, let's see, let's go from the larger to the smaller here. Uh, we'll get rid of that one. This is the Pico Lies Rock ACDC Pico Pick. This one, a little noisy. Yeah, I didn't do that with the uh, compo form, but if you're familiar, none of these are silent. That's not why I pulled these out. Like I said, I just pulled these out because they're roughly the same shape and also similar in size, and at least you'll have a comparison. But here you go for this one. It's considerably smaller, but this is a lot thicker. So after that one, we can look at the Gal Studio Rice Ball, which is also a noisy little critter that's a pain to take apart. Uh, but it is small, but thick. You see these two are pretty, pretty similar. This one's a little bit bigger. So you're almost comparing the same sort of thing there. Uh, the last one is the Gal, some call this the Rice Ball 2, some call it the 
um, rocker, the rice ball rocker. And it imitates or kind of follows the idea of those louty shuffles. It's not a copy in any way. There's balls in these grooves here. And uh, I'm surprised this one isn't a little bit more popular because it's, it is a nice one. But it's, it's a little bit bigger than the Rice Ball V1. It's closer to the same size as the Pico Pick. And that, do you see, is about like that. So there we have our size comparisons. Let's go ahead and do our weights. I'm just going to stand it up. There are magnets in here, so if I stand it up on its end, it's least likely to interfere. So about 32 grams. 32 grams. If I do this, we added a couple grams because the magnets are probably pulling it down onto the scale. So. Yeah, let's say about 31 grams. And dimension-wise, it is 40 millimeters tall. It's going to be the same in all three directions, of course. And at the thickest point in the middle, looks to me to be right on 11 millimeters. Now, taking this apart was a real task. Um, you need a thin blade. And I don't remember if I used this trusty Swiss Army Knife Classic or not. But uh, what you want to do is work your way around the outside, twisting at this, and slowly lifting the two sides apart. Because what you're doing is pulling the, the bearing is glued in there, and you need to lift it out of its socket. It's either going to come out of the top or the bottom, and then we'll deal with it once you get to that point. But now, of course, mine's done. Um, but you want to find thin blades, maybe a variety of blades. You can't go just get a, get a butter knife um, to do this carefully. And even as careful as I was, I still did manage to bugger it up a little bit. But now, now that mine's not glued, it does come apart very easy. You just turn these two pieces opposite of each other so you can grab it from both sides and pull it apart. And there's the bearing get the bearing out. I'm just going to use the stem from this and cock it in there sideways a little bit and that pulls it right out. Now as far as as far as I could tell, I mean I looked around, I measured this and it is, um, I want to say it's 10, 10 by 15 by 4 and um, here is a image of what they look like when you look them up on uh, Amazon. And um, I, I, the only thing I see that's consistent when you look at all the different ones is the number 6700. So it's like a 6700 version, whatever this bearing is. And it comes in different, you know, prefixes and suffixes and like one's a dash, uh, dash 2RS, dash BU, um, they do reference RC, as in, uh, I assume, radio-controlled car parts. So these are sort of like R188 bearings, you know, high-performance bearings, I guess. You could try different bearings if you need to. I don't know if you would ever need to. I can't see that you, wear, you would wear a bearing out on this. It's so, uh, it's so um, low impact, you know. It's, it's not really going to cause any damage to the bearing. But if you were... A bearing person, you might want to try the different bearings. I don't know what's going to fit for sure, so, you know, be warned there. But here's a close-up of the two halves. Try to focus on that for you. And you can just pop the bearing back in there, which I got cocked sideways a little bit. There it goes. And then, uh, there you go. Back to normal. I should mention that it did take some effort. Once you did get this apart, and once you got the bearing out of there, um, 
what your best bet to do is. I didn't want to soak the whole thing in uh, in acetone because that might have loosened up the, the, uh, the magnets and stuff. But once you get this out, you can take something like a trusty Swiss Army knife and get in there and carefully scrape out all of the excess glue. So it's what you'll see is like, it looks like clear super glue, I think. Um, but you might have to clean it off of that and you might have to clean it off of this part as well. And you can see here, this side, this side didn't get buggered up too badly, but if you look around the, uh, the stem on this, you'll see where I buggered it up a little bit. With the blade getting in there and prying and stuff like that. So you really shouldn't need, like I said, you shouldn't need to take it apart. But on the other hand, it's foolish for them to, to glue it together because this is something you put in your pocket and all it takes is a little bit of, of, of iron dust or rust, um, anything magnetic to get down in there and it's going to be stuck on those magnets on the inside and you're going to have a fun time cleaning it out. You know, when they could simply make it accessible like I did by not gluing it together and uh, then you'd be able to get in there and clean everything including the bearing. And what if you dropped it in water? What if it got, what if then the bearing was sticky because it was dropped in water? Uh, you could replace it. The usual complaints. But uh, that's it. Um, this is the most silent fidget I think that I've encountered. And hopefully you found that useful. This is probably a pretty short one, but that's kind of what I was in the mood for this evening. So I hope you enjoyed this. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks for watching. Bye.